Let's stop aiming to be the smartest person in the room and have the right answers. I mean, one skill that you can't avoid as a good leader is you have to be good at making decisions, even when you don't have all the answers or all of the input you would prefer. You need to be okay with being wrong, but you need to be okay with other people being right. right. It's incredible to me how many leaders really resent when people are right on their team. That whole, I should have thought of that feeling. It's not your responsibility, just like a parent or a teacher, it's not your responsibility to have all the answers. It's your responsibility to make decisions when those answers come about and take action on them. Hello, and welcome back to the Better Human Podcast, a podcast about making humans better humans and demystifying the world of relationships, communication, and entrepreneurship for your better life. Today, we're joined by the one and only Leah Koss, co-founder and president of Build a Biz Kids. We're going to learn all about that. You're running an awesome, awesome organization, and you're doing some incredible work. Leah's on a mission to change the way we value and educate people in society in order to prepare today's kids for the future filled with artificial intelligence, technology, and ongoing change. She has built platforms and education methodologies that promote the development of an essential human skill development in children and youth. I love what you're all about and what you stand for. I'm, I, I'm a big believer in it, and that's where we want to talk. Buildabizkids.com is a nonprofit uh, society that offers after school, spring break, and summer camp programs for children and youth ages of 7 to 15 years old. Uh, that centers around entrepreneurship, which is something we're all about. Let's start the conversation by jumping right in to get on uh, to get to know our guest, Leah. Learn about your impactful journey, Leah. Welcome to the show. So, Leah, let's start with the big one, which is how did you start this? How did you end up in the profession? Where did this all come from? It's always, you know, like for so many of us, it's a whole life of little things that kind of put stones on your path, and then boom, here you are. Um, of course, we wish we could find our passion or mission in life, you know, right out of high school. But for me, it took until about 35, 36 years old to really understand what that was, but my whole life was serving it. So when I grew up back in the 80s, 90s, no such thing as entrepreneurship, certainly no such thing as women in leadership roles. It was all about working your way up the corporate ladder, but of course you never wanted to get to the top because every movie portrayed the CEO as being a bit of a, a guy that nobody liked. Um, yeah, <laughs> so for me growing up, my only role model was Murphy Brown raging alcoholic, a uh, woman in power though. And I thought, oh, that's what I need, shoulder pads and a bad attitude. And that's going to get me to the top. Um, but I always thought I was just going to run an, a, an organization. I didn't know you could start these things. You know, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, these entities felt like they'd been around for hundreds of years. They're already established. Right. So when I finally got my first role, it was working with 1-800-GOT-JUNK in franchising. And I was selling businesses to regular people. And after a while, it kind of clicked to me because the CEO who started that company dropped out of high school, dropped out of college, you know, and I'm going, oh, anybody can do this. This is great. I've been to business school. I should be able to do this and launch my own business, crash and fail, smash cut, you know, what, 20 years later, I'm like, here I am. And it was all just serendipitous. I went and sat down with a friend. I was going to write a book all about franchising because that's where my career really took me. And when I asked her, what are you up to these days? She said, I created this really cool kids entrepreneur program and it still didn't smack me in the face. I was actually thinking it would be good for somebody else. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it clicked and I just realized, wow, like the number one thing that people say when they hear what we're doing is I wish they had this when I was a kid. And all of a sudden, all of these pistons kind of fell into place. And I was like, my God, if I had learned these kinds of skills, I wouldn't have been as misguided on how I thought the world worked and what I could actually accomplish. And everything just became so clear that it was like drop everything and just run <laughs> run as fast as you can in this direction of educating kids differently, changing how we value humans in society, really looking at the future and going, if we have kids in school for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Is that 12 years of education that's going to serve them for the next 50 years of their lives? Or is it going to expire before they even graduate high school? And is it even relevant due to robotics and AI? So yeah, that's that's where the mission came from, a lifelong journey. Amazing. Look, I dropped out of high school. I had a very difficult time in school. I think I was telling you in our, uh, our discovery call that, you know, if I had a strong connection and relationship with the teacher, regardless of the subject, I was able to excel within that subject. And, and I think what I only understood much later on in life was 
I needed to to be in quotations educated differently. I needed to be spoken to. I needed to be uh, almost, I, I think, you know, collaborated with and participated with and supported instead of being instructed from the front of the room. And 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 we know that, you know, traditional education in some cases is outdated, right? So tell us a little bit about how do you go about building young entrepreneurs? What are some of the experiences that these kids go through? Yeah, you bet. And one thing that I will say is uh, we use entrepreneurship a lot, but we treat it as a medium, not as an end goal. So our goal, just for all the parents listening, going, we don't want every kid to be a Zuckerberg out there. Fair enough. We don't. We, we need people who love working in teams and flourishing in that sense, too. But a lot of the skills you can learn through entrepreneurship will serve that child in any career they decide to go in, whether they want to be a creative person, whether they want to work in a government political setting, whether they want to start their own business or work in other people's businesses. That's really what the objective is. So traditionally, um, soft skills is kind of a word thrown around and we all know that we hate it. I call it either essential skills or human skills, mm -hmm. especially in this age of where it feels like robots against humans, you know, competing for jobs. And so I say, let's become better humans right. in our programs. It's all about real world and relevant education. So if it's not relevant, you and I both know back before COVID or even during COVID, we're like, oh, you should come and watch this seminar. And within a couple of seconds, we're going, when am I ever going to need this? I don't need this. We check out. Well, that's every day for a child in school when the teacher can't properly connect why this is relevant and why you should care and how exciting this could be. Right. So we try to make sure everything is relevant. You learn things almost by accident because you learn it along the journey. So rather than having a math class, when it comes time to learn to price your product mm -hmm. and how much cost is going into that product and what your margin is and, well, do you want to buy that PlayStation? How much do you need to buy? Okay, so um, if, if that's how much your PlayStation is, how many of your widgets do you need to sell with that kind of cost and that kind of profit margin? Boom, kids learning algebra because they want to and it makes sense and they're going, oh, I see how I need this, mm -hmm. right? But you're not doing it as a part of a subject. We also make sure that they're real world experiences, not contrived things. So I know like there's, we love this program, so we're not trying to, to step on it here, but when schools do their entrepreneurial programs, they often conform the, they do what they do with every subject. They put the kids in a box and they control the environment. So it's only friends and family that are really purchasing from students. Mm -hmm. Our students are going into the real world. We go to a mall. And when you go to a mall, you've got really nice customers and you have customers are kind of jerks going, this is stupid. What'd you make slime for? Didn't you see that kid has slime over there? Theirs is better. You know, and the kid is building real resiliency and adaptation and decision making and all those skills that are really important to us being better and more fulfilled humans. And that's what the experience is, whether it's an entrepreneur program, a financial literacy program or stock market program or virtual reality programs, inventors prototyping, whatever it is. It's based around real world relevant experience. And that formula seems to work really well. But I will also say it's about the teaching methodology that goes into it. The when you're communicating and how you're communicating, much like you were talking about your experience with teachers, mm -hmm. it should be a partnership. The moment that a teacher feels it's their responsibility to be the smartest person in the room is the moment the world is doomed, right? right? Talk about a lot of pressure on that teacher's shoulders to have to feel like they have all the answers. Don't worry about it. We got Google now. You don't need all the answers. You're there to facilitate learning and discovery, not to dictate what's right and wrong in the world. That's for the child to discover. And that's a muscle they need to flex in order to survive in a world filled with things like COVID and war and racism. And they need to learn how to look at things around them and make their own decisions. Yeah, you know, I say this all the time, you know, the one thing I just wanna send my kids off into the world to be kick-ass little human beings is the ability to think and make decisions. If I could get them out, out into the world to do those two things, they'll be fine. And I love the fact that you use the word facilitation instead of teach, uh, you know, because it is you're facilitating knowledge, you're facilitating learning, you're facilitating experience. And that doesn't mean because you're the authority that because that that more makes you call it a conductor or an artist or, 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 or a painter in some regards. So, you know, I love the fact you also talk about soft skills. I mean, we've been selling it with soft skills forever. And it is a little bit of a, that word where people went, oh, no, 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 I don't need soft skills. Right. And, and in some regards, if you do this right, you know, I won't have to deal with the adults in corporate. So if you do your problem, if you do your thing properly, then we'll be okay when uh, on the other side.
Oh, it's so funny you say that because some people are like, well, you know, why kids though? And, and we're extra young. So just so everybody knows, our demographic, when people hear kids doing entrepreneurship, they think high school kids. No, no, no. Ours are elementary, ages seven to 13. Um, by the time they hit high school, they care too much about what the world thinks of them, right? We got to get them before that and teach them to think about the world differently. And being a consultant for so many years in franchising, it's tough. As adults, we have to fight for our limitations. We have to defend why we made a stupid decision for our own sake of pride and ego and waking up in the morning and, you know, and it's like, gosh, let's just fix the kids before they get all kind of tangled up in that mess of the real world. So much easier. So I, it's a bit of a cop out, but it's also like, oh, nobody else is doing this. Why wouldn't I? help these kids. That's amazing. So on that note, you've had a long career. You, you, you by definition are an entrepreneur. What have been some of your fuck ups as an entrepreneur? Some of the mistakes you've made, some of the things that you really want to get across and teach that maybe other people can avoid or kids can avoid. Every single fuck up that I have had has a hundred percent been because of what I thought was right. Um, so whether it be, this is the right mindset, this is how I should present myself and, and put myself out to the world. This is the direction I should go, you know. The thing that, the number one lesson that I learned in, in life is I remember sitting with a really good friend of mine. We were talking about all these different CEOs that we knew and, and he goes, you know, they're all just making it up as they go, right? And it was just like this massive epiphany because it's so true. We are cultivated in school that there is only one right answer to everything. And then we get into college and there's still only one right answer to everything because that's a multiple choice test. That is you having to appeal even in English class to whatever that teacher deems as a better opinion or a better way of writing something. And we're brought up going, it all, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what that one teacher thinks. And that's not how the world works. Even hindsight is a bunch of BS because when we look back, we can't even say, yeah, that was the best answer and the best decision we could have made because we didn't get to see the other options come to fruition, right? So it's all really just experience, gut, utilize an incredible team, having a positive mindset. And when you can just take the pressure off your shoulders, that's why, oh, this sounds horrible, um, but that's why I kind of have enjoyed this ride of COVID. Obviously not the health issue, but the mindset issue where I think a lot of people just realize like as a business owner, they're looking at each other going, well, shit, what are you gonna do? I don't know, what are you gonna do? I don't know. And all of a sudden it was like, there is no real rule book. There never was, but there was a perception of one. And when COVID hit, they were all like, there is no rules. And that's where you really got to see the people who were real true innovators who could pivot um, to those who just said, well, when am I going to be rescued? When are things going to come back to normal? You said it was only three months away. We were going to be back to normal in three months. I, and it's like life, it, COVID's just one example, but every single industry, whether it be you're in manufacturing and the tariffs have gone up on aluminum and it's thrown you off cycle, unions coming in wanting to to do things, your employees going on strike, um, all of a sudden nobody likes the color purple anymore, whatever it is, it's always going to occur. Right. And so just there's no right answer. Have fun and just try as many things as you can as fast as you can. <laughs> so that has been, so to answer your question, my first business completely crashed and burned, but nobody knew it. And in fact, they didn't know it probably till 10 years after the crash and burn because I still kept up the perception that, oh, well, I sold it. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's good. And it was all ego. Ego keeping the business running longer than I should have. Ego starting the business in the first place. Ego and keeping up the persona and exhausting myself. Ego in making excuses and defending what happened. And it was not all my fault, you know? Do you still carry that ego today? No, <laughs> that got beaten out of me. <laughs> it had to. It had to. And that's really served me well because now... I am so, ex I'm more excited about how many things we tried this month or this quarter than I am about how many things actually succeeded mm -hmm. because it's so fun trying new things and having like this incredible huge team of, we have about 60 volunteers who are all attracted to our organization because they're going, this is going to be fun. I got an idea. And then they run with something and it's something they couldn't do in their nine to five job. And it's so cool seeing these things happen. We have now comic strips coming out. We have our own character library. So think of like Scooby-Doo or something or yeah. Teen Titans for something more, you know, recent. And there are our own characters that are going to be telling stories and teaching kids and very inclusive. And it's like, we would have never had that unless someone had the passion for it that joined our team. And we said, sure, 
Why not? It's amazing. And just the fact that you're attracting sort of 60 uh, volunteers. I mean, one, the cause is one piece, but you know, the other is you and, and, and let's float into leadership. You know, uh, you're, you're obviously you got an extraordinary energy about you and, 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 and passion and enthusiasm. How much of that is an, uh, is is important to be an entrepreneur? To have that passion, to have that that's uh, that pure commitment, that belief, that that's that investment. It's so important because, I mean, let's be real. As entrepreneurs, we don't know where we're going, right? So you can equate it to almost we're all walking in a fog, and your team is walking behind you in this fog, and you can't make promises to your team to say there is salvation just 15 more minutes away and I can't tell if we're walking in circles or in a straight line but just trust me you you don't want to make promises in that way Mm -hmm. but you do want them to help visualize why the journey whether it takes 15 minutes or 50 minutes is going to be worth it right and how exciting it's going to be along the way because every time we walk another foot we see a little bit more of the world around us and we can pick things up along the way and we can throw things away and we can play games and and it's going to be fun. And if you don't have that mindset, that's just instilling in them that I am here no matter what. Mm-hmm. Life can change. COVID can happen. Whatever happens. Mm-hmm. Our flagship products could all blow up tomorrow. But no, we're in it for not the flagship product. We're in it for that thing that's going to make it all worth it and exciting. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have that and authentically that, you can't fake that because Otherwise, you'll be up at night crying in the fetal position. You need to believe it yourself and be excited for the ride and the journey. That rubs off on others. Let me ask you this question. Uh, Did you have that? Like, did you have a leader or a role model in your career, in your business? Or have you just grown into being this because of the absence of that? You know what I mean by that? Like, did you did, did you become who you became today because you didn't have this mentorship and role modeling and leadership around you and through pure perseverance and grits and, you know, um, like all of us Gen Xs just decided to make it happen? Um, or were, were there people in your life that have contributed to, to, to your position and your mindset today? So many people. I mean, when I was in my 20s, I read every book, right? Good to great, E-Myth and right. winning and all of those. And you start going, oh, you know, what is it? Level five leadership. And you're, you're trying to buy the book yet, right? And you're like, oh gosh, no, you can't do it that way, right? That's inauthentic. And it's you trying to conform like you were taught in school, right? And so that molded me along the way, but that contrast is really important. And then I had some bosses that were awesome in certain ways that really brought out the best of me. And so you kind of, you put that on your bookshelf and then you have some of the worst humans around that you are having to answer to. And I've had two of those in my life right. where they were clients and truly one of them was one of the worst humans I've ever met, but they were successful. And they were successful multiple times over. And it's those people that I think has made the biggest impact on me because I had to just humble myself, put anger, resentment, whatever, off to the side and be like, why are they successful though? What are the things they are doing, right? What are the things that, you know, don't work? And then really just learn to appreciate the people Mm -hmm. for the things they do well. And just pick and choose. Contrast, like the negative feelings you get from others is just as important as the positive one. So it's really been a combination of them all. I could probably name about six people that have all contributed in either a positive or negative way. And then the last one is, I think, the most pivotal, which is being happy with myself. Because if you're not happy with yourself and inspired by yourself and proud of yourself, you constantly see the things in others that you hate because you see them in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is very difficult to build relationships with people when you're constantly feeling like you're defending yourself just by being in their presence Mm -hmm. because you're like, Oh, you do that. Oh no, I I don't do that. I would never do that. Right. And, And you're just constantly having these battles in your head. So being happy with myself, which was a long journey has really been, I think what's allowed me to be a great leader or a better leader. I don't want to say a great leader, but a better leader. A great leader. All right. So um, I was going to ask, I mean, what, what, you know, um, what did you have to do to learn that, which I think you, 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 you described. So let, let me change the question. 
top three um, authors, thought leaders, books, people that a young individual should lean into very early in their life? Any books that you could think of or authors or speakers or individuals? Yeah. You know, as, as a young human being, this is, this is one of the books or the people you have to listen to. Who would they be? Well, I mean, for parents that can then help with the kids, you know, it's not all on the education system. Carol Dweck with Growth Mindset or Mindset is the name of her book. Cool. That one's really going to impact you as a human and as a teacher and as a parent. For kids, I mean, it's controversial because I think he used to do a lot of swearing, but Gary Vaynerchuk is such a great combination of somebody who just promotes kindness, humility, authenticity with a lot of no BS get to the point and, and let's not spend a lot of time making excuses or dwelling on the past. Let's get excited about the next thing you're going to try and, and just assume that failure is going to be like an ongoing thing. So I think he's a great person to talk to. Um, there's a lot of, gosh, for kids. Yeah. I mean, all of us should mm -hmm. be someone that a kid can look up to and, and take something away from. But if we teach our kids that our opinion is the only one that matters and, and it's their responsibility to please us, I think right away, that takes you out of the running to be someone who could really inspire and teach a kid to flourish. Yeah, well, that's the uh, that's the whole world of conscious parenting. That's Dr. Shafali, which is like, we gotta, we yeah. gotta be really conscious in how we're parenting because before you know it, you're gonna turn these little human beings into who you are, even though you're trying to turn them into something that you're not. And it's, it's an interesting thought, but, you know, back to the concept of unconsciousness, we, we don't even realize we do these things. Right? So what I love about the work that you're doing is hopefully what it's doing is it's bringing a, a level of consciousness and a, uh, alertness to parents uh, and even to children themselves. I mean, I think kids today, I've got, I've got a four and a six year old at home. Like my six year old is this little entrepreneur. She's this little adult and she's super, super intelligent. And she's talking to me about how she wants to create a YouTube channel. And I'm in for it. I'm totally in for, for her running as a business, but uh, you know, she's, uh, she's got to learn a little bit. So maybe we'll get her signed up with you. That would be great. All right. So uh, a couple fun questions. Um, if, uh, if there was one thing that you wish you knew early on in your career, what would it be? There's no right answers to anything. That's, a, that's one of the best answers I've ever heard, by the way. <laughs> um, if you could learn one new personal skill, what would it be? Hmm. One new personal skill. To me, communication. Gosh, you're just never done. Tony Robbins would say he's not even done, right? right. He's one of the greatest communicators. Right. Communication. You can have the most incredible ideas, thoughts, inspiration, want to connect with people. But if you can't communicate effectively and in a way that people will receive, then it's all dead in the water. So always wanting to work on my communication. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right. Um... We're going to take a quick little break. Uh, we're going to hear from our sponsor. And we're going to come back to the next section, which we're going to get some more nuggets and uh, insights from you. We talk, uh, we call this the deep dive, uh, deep dive section, where we're going to find out more about the biz and what it's all about and what makes you successful. Okay, just before we jump into the next segment, we're going to take a quick little audio break and we're going to hear from our sponsor, the Better Human Program. The Better Human Program is a 10-week program that equips you with the tools to achieve success in every interaction with other humans. Learn assertiveness, effective communication, interpersonal skills, and take control of your life with the Better Human Program. Check out the link below for all the description information. All right, so welcome on back. Um, we were just having a great conversation about uh, Leah and the business and what you're doing for uh, young entrepreneurs. I'm not even going to call them kids anymore. You are building the next generation of entrepreneurs. You're helping them become independent thinkers, decision makers, uh, generating ideas. But what I also heard you do the most is really help these younger individuals and uh, younger entrepreneurs start to really believe in themselves. Uh, and have that pass passion, which is such an important uh, uh, job to do. So what are some, I mean, you you have a lot of volunteers, you have a lot of people in your organization, you, you, you're a great leader. What are some qualities and skills you think we need to have as leaders today to, to help mentor the next level of entrepreneurs? Uh, stop aiming to be the smartest person in the room and have the right answers. Right. I mean, one skill that you can't avoid as a good leader is you have to be good at making decisions, even when you don't have all the answers or all of the input you would prefer. You need to be okay with being wrong, right. but you need to be okay with other people being right. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And it's incredible to me how many leaders really resent when people are right on their team. That whole, I should have thought of that feeling. It's not your responsibility, just like a parent or a teacher, it's not your responsibility to have all the answers. It's your responsibility to make decisions when those answers come about and take action on them. Totally agreed. So what is a common myth that right now about, um, about some of the work that you do? A common myth. Yeah. Something that you want to debunk. So, you know, I'm a parent and you're like, Oh, I teach entrepreneurs and I roll, do the eye roll in my hair. I think, Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, people carry perceptions and, and, and okay. I think, you know, people could be very judgmental in a lot of cases specifically yeah. around this topic of, you know, helping educate, kids differently so so what do we want to debunk about that what are some what are some common myths that you want to uh smash down so let's say a a myth about the education system and i always put system in kind of quotations is sometimes parents can feel that they have no choice right the choice is either public school or fork out a lot of money for private school and i've heard of this thing called montessori and i've heard about some schools where they just stick kids out in the woods and learn (laughs) and they're like none of that feels right But it really is. I mean, there's even something called unschooling now. So there's homeschooling and then there's unschooling. And that one's that one will blow your mind. Right. To just see how much parents go. No, education is a choice of how my child can learn. Now, how we've built Build a Biz Kids and our um, sister company, BBK Network, is as supplementary education. This is meant to piggyback and enhance any choice that you make around your child's education. And it's there to support you. It's there to support the kid and there to support whatever other education methodology that you have chosen for your child. So I think the myth around the education system is parents do have a lot more choice, but it is overwhelming. It can feel like I got to do all this research. No, what's the right answer? Again, there's no right answer, but um, we might be an interesting option to just help top up whatever it is you're using right now until you have the capacity to really, you know, dive a little deeper if you should ever choose to do that. Right. So um, talk to me a little more about what unschooling is. I, I, I poked up to that. So I, you mentioned it, but what is unschooling? Because I took it as like, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna unteach everything that our kids Yeah. <laughs> so I will say first and foremost, I am not an expert in unschooling. I was just told about it like a number of weeks ago and bought a book on it and I'm trying to dive in. Right. So there's a lot of different uh, teaching methodologies out there. Homeschooling is kind of taking whatever the district has said you must learn and then you execute it at home. Unschooling is closer to a self-directed learning. So there's actually some public schools here where I live um, in British Columbia, where it's a public school but it's a 70-30 kind of split where 70% of the time the students are self-directed, meaning they want to learn how to code video games, direct movies. Um, They even had LARPing. There's a lot of kids who want to do LARPing. That's live action role play, (laughs) dress up stuff. We had another kid who learned how to make mascots and then he started selling them. Um, So it's self-directed for 70% of the time. 30% of the time is just checking the boxes of what the district requires them to learn with their math and their sciences and things like that. Unschooling is kind of taking that 70% and turning it into a 110% of your time. So it's up to the parents to determine, you know, let's see what my child is interested in. And the moment they show an interest, let's lean into it. And then when they show an interest somewhere else, we lean into it. And you're really supporting your child's um, development based on their interests and their curiosity. Um, I guess that would be the most simplest form, but I'm sure some people listening at this going, that's, it's so much more than that. And I apologize again, I'm not an expert on unschooling, but it is something that's out there. Um, there's a lot, there's micro school systems. When COVID first happened, there was right. uh, pandemic pods that started where it was literally like five families getting together and they would just teach their, their kids like homeschooling, but in a pod, yeah. you can take as much or as little control of your child's education as you like. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's just really up to you and what you feel is going to serve them the best. So here's, uh, and this is an opinion question, but you know, in your opinion, what are some fundamentals kids should learn? We know entrepreneurship. What else? What would be some topics or or, or, uh, skills that kids should learn? I am, you know, the number one skill, if I had to say one skill that I wanted every adult (laughs) and child to learn is perspective. And the reason being is when you have perspective and you'll never have all of the perspective you can have in the world, perspective is developed through exposure and experience and seeing things. 
um, your child will be able to feel more empowered about how they sit in their community, their society, in the world, in their job. If I show up to work every day and I've got blinders on because I only know my tasks, but I don't know how the rest of the company works, I'm not going to feel very fulfilled. But if I can remove myself, look top down and go, oh, when I show up and do this job, that affects sales in this way and marketing and production and accounting. And now I feel empowered as well as going, I've got some ideas on how we can make this better because they've got that perspective. Well, now, you know, maximize that to feeling like you understand how your community works, mm -hmm. how you understand your family dynamic works, right? Um, so BBK Network is a sister company that we created. And for once a week online, uh, basically the idea is um, it's something where you put your kids in it and it's about business, social impact, and economics. And you put your kids in and they just stay in it and they keep going until they age out at around age 14. And the idea behind it is that this online classroom gets kids out of their bubble because in that one classroom, there'll be a kid from Austin, Texas, another one from Orange County, California, another one from Montreal, Quebec, and there'll be someone from like Vancouver, BC, all in one classroom. Yep. Because right now kids are not allowed to have perspective. Right. Think about in your, your home. You only need to know what I tell you you need to learn. Yeah. Right. And then they go to school and they're in four walls and you're only going to learn what I think you should learn. And then they even go to the grocery store and they're still just learning about the social niceties and how the world works based on their kind of community. Right. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, in Texas, you go to the grocery store, people talk differently. They look up or look down or how they interact is different. And so if we can get kids out of that bubble sooner, that's where empathy and inclusivity and acceptance and intrigue and curiosity comes from. Right. So perspective is the number one skill because it breeds so much else. You can't gain perspective without doing the other legwork. It's amazing. I, I got educated traveling. Uh, you know, I took off when, as mentioned, dropped out of school. I was actually in my last year of high school in, uh, in, in a rebellious moment. We all, stri uh, you know, stood up in protest and dropped out to fight against the system and the man and the school went, thank you very much to you, your books, get the hell out. And we took off and I went traveling from there. You know, I worked in Club Med and then, you know, did, did, did a lot of travel for years. And I got to tell you, if, if you to ask where, where I got a university degree, it was in a village, barefoot, with a group of people, which, you know, were completely outside of a world that I had ever experienced. And you got to learn perspective and community and insight and understanding. You know, you put yourself in enough environments, you will learn a hell of a lot. I love the fact that you said perspective. I think it is so important. All right. So let me ask you this. You were in franchising. You were running down the corporate road. Um, I didn't ask you this before, but I want to swing back to it. How the hell did you go all the way around into developing and building the next generation of entrepreneurs? Well, I used to sell businesses to adults, so I thought let's just help young kids start them, I guess, right? <laughs> it's not that far of a leap if you really think about it I in guess that not. context. I guess not. Yeah, I guess <laughs> good point. You know, I'm tired of dealing with these adults, so let me let me go to the root cause. Pretty much. All right, very cool. So um, what did your experience in the education system uh, help you understand today about the challenges that some of the kids are facing? I mean, we, we, we grew up in a different type of, uh, call it time and different type of school. What lessons did you take from that, which is so important for us to understand about how kids are being challenged today in the traditional education system? I think a lot of us can probably reflect back and go, you know, we always joke, you know, what am I ever going to learn this for or use it in the real world for, right? And we have a lot of those moments that we reflect on in school. Um, but then we also reflect on and, and the areas that we feel defective, insufficient, insecure about are often the human aspects, right? I, um, or they derive from a human skill, I suppose. And growing up, there was a lot of those moments where I just felt like I wasn't catching on fast enough. Am I stupid? Maybe I am stupid. Oh, I know I'm not going to be good at this course because I was stupid at it last year. And you just create all these self-fulfilling prophecies that compound on themselves. And, and with me, I had the ego because although I felt this way, nobody would ever know. Yeah. Um, I grew up very much, if you are familiar with growth mindset, fixed mindset, I was always praised for being first, fastest, and a natural. Well, if you're a natural, it means you can't practice because then you're not a natural anymore. So I never practiced. And then I fell behind. And when I fell behind, I had to pull other people down so that they weren't too far ahead. And then I became a real mean person. So reflecting on that, those are definitely the things that I go, man, I wish I was taught 
and cultivated to be a better human, a kinder human, an accepting human, a, a person who loved themselves, as opposed to Timmy and Susie having apples and oranges and somebody drops them or steals them. And what does that equal? It just really, it wasn't needed yeah. um, or that context, you know? The other though, is I had the opposite, which was that one teacher. Some of us were lucky enough to have that one teacher. And till this day, I still know every bone in the body because not that it had relevance, it still doesn't have relevance in my life to know where the patella is and the scapula and whatever else. But it really dawned on me that this person, he was a dry individual too. So right. do not think he was this chariz- charismatic person who's like, oh, ho, ho, you're going to love this. No, it was the teaching engagement. Like you said, the partnership that you felt with him. Right. He actually used to call us ladies and gentlemen. And he said, I will call you that until you no longer deserve to be called that. He gave us the respect. He didn't make us have to earn it first. And we respected that. And, in, and we learned things that had no relevance to the world, Greek mythology and you know artifacts from the Mediterranean and whatever else. And I thought if he could have me learn that kind of stuff that had no relevance, mm-hmm. imagine if it did have relevance and we could, you know? So I had both. I, I grew up for a very long time, especially when my business crashed and burned. And I had to reflect on what went wrong. And I realized it was, it was all me that I thought, why wasn't I taught this? Because I read all the books. I passed the tests in business school. I was selling businesses to regular people that on paper had less experience than me for God's sakes. What the hell went wrong? And that anger took a long time to turn into reflection and realize that, yeah, 12 years, 12 years. Is there anything from that 12 years of education that's lasting me for the next you know, 50 years of my life, other than the insecurities it provided for me. Mm-hmm. So that's really what I want to change. And that, and it's that reflection. And, and I am not alone. The reason we have so many volunteers working with us is because they all say I, they could be 18 years old, just graduated last year, or they could be 48 that are volunteering with us. And they all say the same thing. I wish they had this when I was in school. Mm-hmm. And that's sad because it means that nothing has changed in the last 20 years because these two age groups are still reminiscing and wishing the education system provided them a different education. Well, I, I, I personalize with this. I told you, I got, uh, or as mentioned, I got a young four and six year old kid. They're in Montessori right now. And the reason we've got them in Montessori is for independent thinking and learning, right? Um, and for collaboration and for you know decision making and all that and and you know it's 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 quite amazing but i we my wife and i are are in a position going what do we now do next with our kids so there's only so many choices you got the private school montessori is going to end you got public school you got and there's there's a lot to say about the teacher i mean regardless of the type of env- uh, school it comes down to the teacher right? Who is that individual? But we can't bank on that individual being in every single classroom. It's also really tough because I do want to say this, a lot of weight gets put on to the teachers because they are the ones on the front line, but there is not one person that I know that gets into teaching for the wrong reasons. None of them are going, Ooh, I'm going to make a lot of money at this. Right. Ooh, I'm going to get a lot of self-satisfaction from this. Like maybe they enjoy the summer off, but that's also a myth, right? They're not getting as much time off as you think. Right. So nobody gets into it for the wrong reasons, but the system beats the charisma and the fight right. out of the teacher because it just won't budge. And if a teacher, um, for us around here, there's teachers where if they want to bring an entrepreneurship program into their school, they have to pay for the program themselves. What kind of BS is that? Insane. It's just not fair. And it's also not sustainable because it's a module. It's, oh, we're going to talk about anti-bullying. Here's a four-hour module. We can check that off the list. Kids are, are good. Yeah. No, that is, that's not how education works. It's not how learning and, and life experience works, right? So I just want to say that to really defend the teachers because nobody gets into it for the wrong reasons, but they can get beaten down just like any of us in a job that we feel powerless in and don't have as much free range to, to take the liberties and make decisions. And, and like an entrepreneur, they can't go, let's try this this year. So what is the answer for the teacher? How do we, how, not how do we, how does the teacher as an independent, what would your advice be for them to say, you're about to get into a system that has a very strong history or, or there's, a, there's a good chance 
that we might, it might, the system might extinguish your light. And in order to keep your light burning, right? Because you need to be that, that lighthouse in the dark, right? Because that's what a teacher is in some cases. Here's my advice to you. What would that be? You know, it's really tough for me to speak on behalf of teachers and what they should and shouldn't do. It's a battle that I haven't had to fight. And so I wouldn't feel comfortable telling them what to do. But what I would say to anybody who's looking to get into education is to realize that public schools or private schools is not the only thing. Mm -hmm. And that just like a consultant, there's no reason why you can't be a consultant for kids, right? There's parents that'll pay for that. There's no reason you can't create your own educational path. And so a bit of my philosophy with anything that's this ingrained in society. It's basically a rock, right? It's a, a mountain and you're not going to budget very easily and nor should it, right? It, it shouldn't be like, oh, let's just change the entire system based on something that probably won't work or could work, right? You're not going to make those kinds of decisions on a government level. But for us, when we look at something like that, God bless the protesters of the world, but we can either spend our energy picketing and protesting and hoping for change, which might make some changes, but not all the changes. So is the integrity really there that's going to provide the results that you want? Or do you just create a new system, get enough people following it so that the mountain goes, oh, I see how you've proven that stuff out. Okay, it doesn't feel as risky anymore. And then maybe they'll adopt it. And even if they don't, you're still there you're offering it publicly. Anybody can be a part of it. As a charity, we subsidize students from vulnerable communities. We have a lot of support. Um, and while it's not able to help every single person right yet, we're still growing. It is there and it can shine as a beacon for other people as well to maybe create their own paths and, and go, this is what I think the system would look like. You are amazing, by the way. Like I'm just like I'm lost for words in in in, in some of the things you're saying, right? Because you're just you're 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 nailing these points, and you're so passionate, and it's 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 incredible to see. You really you're 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 gifted, Leah. You should you should be proud of what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, we're gonna take a break on that note. We're gonna come back to our final section, and we're gonna close it out with what we call the better human takeaways, which is your advice for the world, your advice on how to get here, and for us to think about uh, 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 things for us to think about moving forward. Okay, just before we jump into the next segment, we're gonna take a quick little audio break, and we're gonna hear from our sponsor, the Better Human Program. The Better Human Program is a 10-week program that equips you with the tools to achieve success in every interaction with other humans. Learn assertiveness, effective communication, interpersonal skills, and take control of your life with the Better Human Program. Check out the link below for all the description information. Okay, welcome on back. We are here at the final section. We are here with uh, Leah Koss. Uh, I was about to butcher your title right now, who is co-founder and president of uh, Build the Biz Kids, which is an amazing organization teaching kids how to be entrepreneurs and building not just uh, entrepreneurs, but the next level amazing human beings that are independent thinkers, that operate with perspective, that can collaborate and get along with others, that stretch themselves above and beyond themselves and can operate in what we define as the world of other, which is an incredible mission and an incredible journey that you're on and very powerful. And we need more people like you. So the last section is what we call the better human section. And uh, there's three questions to it. The first question I start with is, what is the one question I should have asked you today that I didn't ask you? <laughs> you know, I was trying to prep for this question. And it's actually a question that I would, it's probably the same question I would pose myself, which is, what does it take for the education system to change? And it's one that I don't have an answer to. Um, I mean, I could use this space to kind of flog some programs that we're doing, but that's just let's, a question that on, I really want. To let's go there. I'll ask you. So, you know, um, so to change, what, what do we need to do to change the education system? Okay. Yeah. All right, Leah, what, what do we need to do to change the education system? <laughs> Patience, <laughs> love, I'm sure. But I think it's more of a, a question that I want to pose out to the world because I just don't know the answer. Yeah. It's the question that keeps me up at night. It's the question that I want to, to seek the answers to as well. And so I put that out to everybody. And the reason I want to put that out is please comment in whatever way and whatever medium that you are connecting with this podcast on, because we all have so many different views of what it'll take to make a, the education system change, but also what is the right education system? That's how we evolve. We want to know what do you wish you had learned as a kid? 
what was the good and the bad for you as a kid growing up? If you're a parent, what are you sitting there at night shaking your head going, I can't believe this is what they're teaching you. You know, why are they not teaching you this? What are the things that make you successful or happy on your day-to-day -day life that we should be teaching and breeding into kids when they're seven years old? Um, so that's a question that I actually, I wanted to kind of turn this around on you and pose this to your audience. And that is the question I have that I would love your answers to. It's an amazing, amazing turnaround and redirect. And we will, we'll put that out to the audience. Audience, put out your comments and your, 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 your uh, suggestions and what we need to do to change the education system. And maybe change is a strong word. What can we do to evolve and innovate how we're, yeah. we're educating our kids. You know, my daughter loves yeah. science right now. She's six years old. You know, if you ask me, should I have learned science? No, I would have liked to learn financial management. I would have liked to learn how to invest, how to save money. What I would have liked to learn is, is, is how to be more confident in myself and how not to feel insecure and judgment and have judgment against others. So I love that you are reflecting though on what you would have liked and what she likes and realizing they're two independent things though, because although science, maybe she does become a scientist and create some incredible COVID vaccines when she's right. older, whatever the case is, or maybe she doesn't, but what she is learning is cause and effect. Right. That's relevant, right. And finance and business. And she's learning about how things can react differently, depending on temperatures and mood and atmosphere. And all of that is relevant learning. Exactly. And that's why she's into it. She's not, she's into the, the, the exercise of things. And I think, you know, maybe that's part of the answer to the education system, which is we need to treat this as an exercise and as a practice instead of an absolute. Yeah. And one thing just to throw it out there for everybody, just on how my mind goes, sometimes when we think of the education system, we still picture a school with a yard and a this and a that and a assembly area. To me, I'm like, why are we putting kids on a bus to drive them to four walls? Why not have the bus converted with desks in there? We can have a smart TV in the front of the desk with Wi-Fi traveling. And every day that bus drives to the park to work that day, to the library, to a business and hangs out in their meeting room, to the museum, to the aquarium. And every day is a new experience. Why does the bus have to go to a box? Let's have the bus be the box <laughs> and take them to different boxes. You, 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 you got to... Uh, uh, um franchise that <laughs> right <laughs> right yeah. all right yeah. learning bus um okay next question what does the word better human mean to you and how do we all achieve that being a better human i believe is when you can become a better human meaning on the journey of always bettering oneself that is the only way to actually be a happy human I believe everything else is not authentic. It's also not sustainable. It's filled with happy moments, but not true happiness and fulfillment. So being a better human, I believe, as much as we're talking about education and entrepreneurship and money-ish stuff and political stuff and whatever, it's really about your mindset. And, and that word almost gets thrown around too much right now. It's about your mind, I think. Right. It's about the actual physical mind. Does it have what it needs? Are you giving it space to do the magic that it does? Nobody actually knows how the brain works, right? It's still this mystery. And we need to give it and honor it as much as you would a god because it has that much power in your world, right? So if we can really give our minds the space, the quietness, the, the ability to heal when it needs to heal, the ability to breathe and see new things and gain new experiences, that is becoming a better human. And that moment when you wake up and go, yes, I don't even know what I have on the calendar today, but just yes, that is happiness. And you are not only going to be a better human for yourself, but for everyone that you encounter. That's awesome. Do you, do you practice that each day? Is that, is that part of your routine? It's been the biggest pivotal change for me is really getting in touch spiritually with um, I used to be very resistant to the, the woo woo. I used to say, I'm not woo woo. I'm just woo. Now I'm woo woo woo. I, and I'm totally proud of it. I am like, yes, let's get in touch with myself, my brain. Let's feel what my body is feeling today. Let's see where my emotion is on literally an emotional scale. And one of the, the things that I learned that had a great impact is no matter how you wake up in the morning, if you try to always feel elation, that jump can be too, too strong for you. But if you're feeling anger, let's go to resentment. And then from resentment, let's start thinking about 
jealousy. And then from jealousy, let's start thinking about, you know, and you just walk yourself up these small increments. And all of a sudden, within five minutes, you're at elation. But when you try to wake up and go, why am I not elated today? Why am I not happy? I grew up identifying as depressed for ever since I was 14 to 30 something. <laughs> and I, I just thought this is how I am. It's genetic. I can't escape it. It's on both sides of my family, this, that, and the other. And I realized that there's so much control I actually had there. One was my own control of my mind. The other was the control of what's actually fueling my mind, such as nutrition. And that's been the biggest change. Yeah. Nutrition, environment, relationships, right? But even that, you're going to attract the relationships in your life based on how you're feeling, right? So as much as we want to say, why can't you be how I want you to be so I feel better? That's never going to work. So I really believe it comes down to everything that's just inside of you. And that's going to attract the things that you want in your life. Yeah, I agree with that. Totally. Totally agree with that. Okay. Final question. At the end of each episode, we ask our guests for a better human takeaway, a one or two line or piece of a uh, piece of advice, a sort of big learning from today's discussion and conversation. What's your better human takeaway for the audience? What do you want the audience to walk away with today? I'm going to be a bit of a broken record in that there is no right answer, but to take that a step further, there's no right answer. So try as much as you want. And that includes for parents around your careers today. Volunteer with an organization that you think you'd get to do some really fun stuff you can't do in your own world. When it comes to your kids, try different education. It doesn't mean you have to pull them out of the public education system. It just means, hey, kiddo, every Tuesday, we're going to do this now. And just start experimenting and trying new things. And, and parents, stop shaming parents because, damn it, <laughs> just it really prevents people from feeling that liberation. That's why we want better, fulfilled, happy people that grow up from the start um, that way, because the sooner we can get to a point of acceptance, inclusivity, and curiosity of other people's opinions, the moment the world becomes really colorful and exciting and not boring, and you can throw out the rule book without being judged for doing it. That's amazing. Amazing. I want to get involved with your organization. We're going to talk afterwards. All right. Where can the listeners get in touch with you and uh, build a build a biz kids? All right. So if you would like to connect with me personally, LinkedIn is always the best place. Um, so Leah Koss, I'm the only one on there. Uh, easy to find. Feel welcome to add me. When it comes to our organizations, they the handles for social media and the websites are the names. So Build Biz Kids is the registered charity. And then we also have the BBK Network, which is the sister company of it that just launched because of COVID, actually. And our first cohort registers for September. Registration is open now, and that's bbknetwork.com. Amazing. We're gonna we're gonna post that out. We're gonna promote it for you, and we're gonna get all that uh, all those details in the in the notes and all oh, the footnotes and the captioning. Leah, you are a inspiration. You are full of energy. Um, you're fantastic. You're, as mentioned, I think the work you're doing is incredible. Um, super su su super into it. Thank you for taking the time today. This this was a great conversation, and we're gonna maybe follow it up again. Yes, I would love that. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. All right. If you like today's episode, don't forget to click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to follow Leah. Don't forget to follow Build a Biz Kids. Don't forget to sign your kids up and don't forget to be amazing parents and contribute to their education. We will see you next time. Hey, I'm Greg Witz. Thanks so much for coming and checking out the video. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. So I'd highly suggest that you click this video over here and don't forget to subscribe and share.